Hello. So, I'm driving. Welcome to my car. Hi. Oh, there are so many trucks up there. Everyone's doing shit on Tuesday. Anyway, I want to talk about diet, but not in a very, like, right or wrong way. I guess just my experience with it. Because um, I was thinking, I was having some interesting thoughts right before making this, like, filming. And firstly, like, I'm borderlining on pescatarian. I don't eat all seafood, but I'm just like trying to experiment. Whatever. Um, and I guess overarchingly, like my umbrella thing I want to talk about it is that for me, the way that I navigate most things is by listening to my body, listening to what it wants. I would say like listening to how it feels, but like it doesn't really give me a Oops, doesn't really give me an option to choose how I feel. It just feels. If it doesn't, my, my, I'm a Virgo. <laughs> and I feel like everyone's stomachs do this, but like, it, your body will tell you when it doesn't like something that you eat. Whether that's like as something as extreme as like an allergy, or if it's just like you get queasy or upset, or you feel heavy or stagnant, or it just feels like claggy, or you know, if you feel like you're gonna vomit, or if you get like a skin rash after eating it, like if you have any kind of reaction or inflammation from eating something, that's your body saying, hey, I'm not used to this. If it's just a matter of that, just being like, hey, I'm not used to this. I haven't quite acclimatized to it. Like your gut microbiome doesn't have the things that it needs to be able to break this down. Or like, hey, this is not good for your body. Do not eat this. Um, and I've been through waves and I've been through cycles of like understanding that because I guess starting from like way back when I haven't liked meat for a very very long time from ever since pretty much I can remember I've not really liked the taste of like meat <laughs> I've liked the taste of like a McDonald's cheeseburger <laughs> and like a Dagwood dog but that's rarely it's barely meat um and yeah I haven't ever loved meat and I was always as a kid like I would eat chicken because I couldn't really taste it and mum would put it in like more flavorful dishes and I would eat like taco minced meat because again it was always really really flavorful and I couldn't really taste meat but eating things like sausages and steak and like things that really tasted of meat I would always be really like grossed out by it I just didn't like the taste and I didn't like how I felt eating it before I really understood the concept of like vegetarianism and animals being meat <laughs> and then like my first interaction of this was just like going to bed because I think my family would in roundabout ways I think just communicate to me that it was always a little bit burdensome that I didn't like the meals my mom would cook and it, I didn't like the food and sometimes she might take it personally or sometimes it might just be like as little as like a oh this is just an inconvenience because then what are you gonna eat i would be like maybe five or six years old going to bed just being like why can't i like me like god because i was raised christian not heavily christian but i believed in god and like god isn't like the almighty like one man god um because i guess god is a whole different thing to me now but um i go to bed and i'd be like god like why don't i like me like please just let me like me like, oh, he's like steak. And I'd like imagine pictures of meat in my head before I'd go to bed and just be like, please, like, please, like, please, let, let me eat meat, let me eat seafood, let me like it, like, please. And at the root of those wishes, it wasn't like, it was just a little girl being like, I don't want to keep on being a burden to my family. I don't want to keep making things hard. I don't want to be the difficult one. I don't want to be the puzzle, puzzle piece in this family that doesn't fit. I don't want that. I don't want to be a problem. I don't want to be an issue. And things never changed. <laughs> Still haven't changed. I mean, I like salmon now, but also like, again, now that I'm older, it isn't just a thing of not liking it. Ethics do come into it um, for me now. And like, that's a whole other topic that I'm not really touching on today. What I'm touching on today is just my feelings. <laughs> just my feelings. <laughs> And just my personal feelings. Because I guess, I mean, another disclaimer that I want to make is that whether it is like an ethical conscious choice or whether it is just you listening to your body, either of the, like, pretty much.
much any choice you make in terms of like your diet and how what you put into your body and like your choice for your life and taking care of yourself it's nobody else's business and it should be respected just as like as a fact of you being a human being and like you're allowed to have a say in your rights about your body and what you put into it and everything like that like no matter what your reason is it should be respected and you deserve that as a human being um but I think my experience of it I was always spoken to and like communicated to and like dealt with by the like in the manner that this was my choice and I was choosing to be difficult like why couldn't I just choose to eat meat um, because I'm choosing not to eat meat so why don't I just eat it because I did when I was little sometimes and it's just a burden to run. Um, never in those like outright words that I think is definitely how I was handled and I don't think anyone in my family has ever understood that it's not me like choosing even and even if it was it shouldn't be an issue but I'm listening to my body and ultimately these people are asking me to not listen to my body to make me feel like shit physically and mentally just to not be an inconvenience to them and to not be difficult and it's changed now <laughs> like in the past like couple years like it's gotten a lot less like eye rolly or you know like forgetting that I don't drink milk or like you know like the meat thing's always been fairly obvious but like for a few years there it would just be like I'd go over to my parents house and if they ever made me a chocolate or a coffee they'd make it with milk and then I'd be like oh like I'd try it and I'd be like oh like do you have any soy milk and they wouldn't have any soy milk and so I'd just feel wasteful and like then my mom would feel bad because my mom's a very sensitive person and so like if she like does something wrong it's like it's a whole emotional thing and like it would just create this just loop of just like fuck like in my head the thought would be like god everything would be easier if I just ate like a normal person and then what would also be fed back to me from the people around me is like god it would just be so much easier if you ate like a normal person and it's like I know this is probably just this is just something that everyone goes through if you have an alternative diet and I understand and it's just difficult like there's no buts it's just annoying like it's annoying just to be doing something that I feel is so right like I'm listening to my body like it's not just like it's not that I'm choosing to be difficult which is how it always translates to feeling like through any conversation through any interaction these people seem to be dealing with me as like a, oh you're just choosing to be annoying and it's like fuck like no I'm not like I'm not choosing to be annoying and again even if it was ethical even if it was a conscious mental choice it's not to be annoying it's because it wants sits right with it by that way like by your values by like your spirit by what you believe how you want to lead your life and then there's like there's a little bit like that with me but a lot the, a lot of it also is just that like like a recent thing is that my body like since I, I've been eating less gluten and so now that I've been if I eat a little bit of gluten it upsets my body and I went back to my family and my dad just gave me this whole lecture of just like oh well it's because you haven't been eating it if you cut anything out of your like diet then once you start to introduce it again your body's going to go in shock because it doesn't know how to deal with it and then it was just like well you just need to start eating more gluten again like you just need to start introducing it in like low amounts and I was just like like I don't want to like I don't I don't want to because my body feel like and so I tried and then my body was just in pain like I was just in pain for like two weeks and I was inflamed and it was just I was upset I was more depressed and it was like I just don't I don't want to be able to eat gluten I don't want to eat it because it makes my body upset if I do it hurts and like I'm happier when I don't and that's the same thing with me and it's the same thing with everything that I choose not to eat is that like it's not me just choosing to be like so I can be a difficult person and make everyone else's life a burden it's like my body I'm listening to my body if I eat something with gluten in it if I drink dairy milk if I eat meat my body 
feels like shit. It feels like shit. And not in an emotional way. It just physically feels like shit. Like, it, and it's in pain. And, like, it, there's, like, stabbing feelings on either side of my abs. And, like, I feel nauseous and I want to vomit. Like, my body hates it. Like, it... It hates it! And it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel light. It doesn't feel easy. But when I eat the things that I want to eat, if I eat the things that don't upset my body... I feel happier, I feel easier, I can wake up and like, my, like even just my digestive system works better, like, it, I know these are all very like easy and cons like conceptually simple things to grasp, but like, I don't know, I'm just so exhausted by the idea that like, listening to your body is something that is an inconvenience for other people. And that listening to your body is something that should be changed and like put through, like pushed through just so you can fit into what's easiest to cater for. Like why do I have to introduce little bits of gluten and get used to it again when doing that just makes me feel sad? Doing that gives me rashes on the like side of my arm. Doing that inflames my body and makes me bloated. Why do I have to do that? Why do I have to do that just so I can eat gluten again? I don't want to eat gluten again. Yeah, it's fucking difficult because there's a lot of things that isn't gluten free. But do you know what is more difficult? Being in pain every fucking single time I try to eat bread that isn't gluten free. <sighs> like that's difficult. And it's like, it's literally nobody else's fucking problem. It's nobody else's issue. And then this kind of just like compounds into the whole like being raised in a family doesn't accept you so you have to become hyper independent. Like every time I go there I bring my own bread, I bring my own milk, I bring my own everything and I try to be as little as of inconvenience as possible. But then because your parents are your parents, they want to cater to you, they want to provide for you, but then blah 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 blah. Whatever. It's a whole spiel and I want to get into the sensitivities of it. But like... I just caught myself like... Well, not even just caught myself like I was trying to do the thing that I was doing when I was little which is just like looking at like looking at the process of listening to my body just like listening to the thing that I live in listening to the thing that holds me listening to the thing that keeps me fucking alive and like overriding that because overriding that because of the idea of just like the fact that I could just eat a little bit of gluten every now and again and maybe my body would get used to it again and maybe my butt, micro, gut microbiome would be used to it again it's like it just flashed me back to that little like five or six year old girl that was just like going to bed wishing she could eat meat so she'd be less of a burden and it's like god like why should that feeling ever exist why should the feeling ever exist of you doing something for your body to make you feel happier and to make you feel better and healthier and more right and not in pain? <laughs> like, why should those choices and those actions and those decisions ever be hindered or shamed because of somebody else's like feeling of or want or desire of convenience? It's just so upsetting because now my entire fucking gut is ridiculous. Like I ate a very normal breakfast this morning and now it's just like, ow, 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 ow. Because it's been fucked up for the past three weeks. It's been so fucked. It's been so fucked. Ah! <sighs> anyway. And again, disclaimer. Even if it is your conscious mental choice, ethical, whatever, to cut out things from your diet, that is still a choice that you can make and that you should, that should be respected. And you are, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I just want to outline that because I think there was, like, there's this tension between, I guess, like, people who are, like, celiac and who can't eat gluten because it upsets their body and then people who, like, aren't celiac. But gluten just hurts their body, and people are like, well, like, you're not celiac, so just eat it. And it's like, no! Just because I don't have, like, a life-threatening, like, awful reaction doesn't mean I just have to just fucking tough it out, you know? And, like, even if you are a vegetarian or a vegan that has previously been, like, a meat lover, but 
then you've chosen not to eat meat because you're like, ah, it just doesn't sit with me right. Like, it doesn't fucking matter. It's still your choice and you're allowed to make it. And you're allowed to be like, no, I don't want to eat that thing. You know? I feel like there's this, like, bypassy effect of, like, if, if health can be a thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, with the whole thing, like, people have more compassion and more, like, understanding with people who physically aren't allowed because of something, because of a very, very, very heavily adverse reaction to their that would take drastic measures of their health. Like, like a fucking, what are those things? Not allergy people get. Allergy reactions. Those really intense ones. Anaphylaxis. Like, anaphylaxis and, like, the reactions that you have from celiac, with celiac disease or something, whatever it is. The really bad gluten reaction. People have a lot of understanding and a lot of, like, oh, yeah, that's okay for those people not to eat those things, which it is. But also if somebody chooses to omit something and it's like a choice, it's as if that choice is then taken as this like, I'm choosing this just to piss everyone off. Where it's like, it's, yeah, it's a choice, but it's also, and like, yeah, the reaction might not be as bad. But like, there's an emotional reaction for the people who choose to ethically not consume meat. Like, there's the guilt and there's the dis disgust and there's like the rejection of it. And then there's also people who aren't celiac, who eat, like, who don't want to eat gluten, who are like, yeah, I don't shred my insides and, like, risk, like, immune stuff, but it still feels fucking awful. And I feel like if you can extend compassion to the people who, whose bodies have, like, a more extreme reaction, you can extend compassion to the people who just choose not to. It's the same fucking thing at the end of the day. You're choosing not to eat something because it has an adverse reaction to your body, soul, mind, whatever, no matter how much of a scale that is. It's like the same thing of like when people want to compare pain and it's like I feel that oh it's just so you know like with mental health or with physical health it's like you know like if there's someone like struggling at work or like doing anything and like the same thing about mental health of just like you know there are obviously people there's severe mental illness you know there's like ones that like it risks your life but then there's also people who just like go through waves of cyclical depression but it's like a differentiating it's like compassion can only be extended due to like how much suffering you're going through and if it's an ex like an exorbitant amount of suffering then you get all the compassion which you should but also if it's like only a little bit of suffering it's like oh well just like toughen it out and like don't like just whatever like it's you're not a, it's not as bad as other people so deal with it yourself essentially and it's like motherfucker just like Ah, oh, I'm just so mad about it. Just, why can't everyone just be nice? Why can't everyone just like it? Why? Why? Why can't everyone just understand and have compassion? Why? Why? Is it because deep fucking down, you know the gluten upsets your gut too? And you're just choosing to eat it because it's the easiest thing to eat? And you're scared that if you stopped eating it for a little bit, your gut microbiome would be like, Ooh, yay! I don't, I don't feel inflamed anymore. And then, like, you know, you're just being a little fucking bitch that's pushing yourself through it because it's easier? Ugh! Fuck you! And I'm not talking to anyone, but like, drives me insane. Drives me fucking insane. Why can't people just be more compassionate? Oh my fucking god! It doesn't it doesn't take anything from you? It doesn't cost anything just to be like, oh, that's your choice. Nice. Why is that so hard? Why? Oh, I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm angry. It boggles my fucking mind, man. I'm just getting super angry now. And I'm allowed to be angry, but now at this point I'm just like yelling at a phone. It's like, well, how much of this do people actually need to see? I mean, you know, you can see whatever you want, but I'm just gonna yell about the same thing for like maybe another 40 minutes, who knows? There's no stopping me. I'm enraged. I'm angry. I'm very angry. Because Jesus mother fucking Christ. I just I recognize myself as somebody who is so impressionable and highly, highly highly prone to people pleasing and bending what I know is good for me because of other people. There's just another pattern of that of just being like, oh maybe I should just like eat gluten and then like put my body through like absolute living fucking hell for like two weeks mm, because it just might be easier. It's like no bitch, like you're stupid. No. I mean no, I'm not stupid but you know what I mean? Like no. Bitch no. We're through that. We're done that. We're done with that. We're not doing that anymore. Gluten is owie on tummy. Makes hurt. Digestive system fucked. Don't 
do it. Who cares what your dad says? God damn it. Meat doesn't taste good. Tastes gross. Probably tastes good to other people. Good on ya. You're allowed. That's fine. I'm not gonna tell you not to eat it. But just let me not eat it. Stop giving a shit about what I put in my body. Blah. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> I'm not done. I'm gonna still rave about it when I really turn this video off, but for now, for now, I'm done. Okay? Have a lovely day. Thank you for, like, listening to this. Um, if you feel similarly, know that you're allowed to be fucking pissed and trust your body. Listen to your body. Above anything, just listen to your body. Right? You know, if you eat something and it starts making you feel a little queasy, it's fine to not eat it. I had that experience with eggplant. I bought eggplant and I made a delicious pasta bake and then it made my body feel like shit. And I'm like, oh man, this was some sad. Like, what do you do? I was like, oh well, fuck, it's eggplant. Who gives a shit? It's fucking eggplant. No one gives a, no one gives a fuck. No one gives a fuck. It's fucking eggplant. My family didn't even eat it as I grow up. No one I know likes really, like, really likes eggplant to the fact that it'll be like a fucking inconvenience for me to not eat eggplant.